today's vlog. Today's a bit of a crazy day already. If you've read from the title, this is the one year update of my nose job. Sorry, I'm like rushing to eat a bagel. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, a year ago at this time, I had a nose job and I posted a video about it and I was gonna just stop there and let that be the only video that lives on the internet. But it's been a year later and right until this day, I'm still getting questions from people about the surgery and how everything went after the fact. People wanted an update, so if you are one of the people who are following for the no job content, this video is for you. If you like home renovation, it's not this video. I thought I had more time to prepare, but it's gonna take a little over an hour to get to my surgeon's office, so I'm scrambling. Anyway, for a little backstory, a year ago at this time, I had a nose job and I was so insecure about my nose. I did the whole thing in secret. I didn't want anybody to know. Um, I think I told like one or two friends right before and I told my sister just in case I like did not survive the surgery, but everybody else found out right after the surgery. I either FaceTimed them that week and gave them a real jump scare to see myself on uh, FaceTime all bruised and disgusting. Basically what's gonna happen today, I'm gonna go to my surgeon's office, they're gonna probably take a look at my nose, do some photos, and then after I get home from this appointment, I will sit down and talk to you guys about what happened after the fact, because I shared that video, it exists on the page if you guys wanna go see it, um, or watch it after this video, but I will fill you in with everything that went on after that first, I think I filmed for like two weeks after my nose job, maybe, um, and what that whole thing looked like, so let's get ready to go. I made it. I just feel a sense of responsibility to share an update about this because when I was going through it, it brought me a lot of comfort to see other people talk about it and what their experience was like. I ended up writing down, oh here it is, wrote down updates as I went through the experience so that I could tell you guys about it if I ever wanted to. We've got a lot to talk about. This might be a long video. The original No Job video was actually like a one hour long vlog and I got too scared to share all that detail. There was a lot I cut out because I just, it's scary to be vulnerable on the internet and a lot of you follow for home renovation. So you guys, like this is not the kind of content you would be looking up, but I've grown a following on here of really um, sweet, subscribers who are subscribed because of the nose job they want to see the update and everything so anyways if you're following for home renovation and this is not your cup of tea you can feel free to click off but for anyone who wants the one-year update i have a lot to tell you so stay tuned all right i got home and immediately changed into sweatpants and I'm wearing a mic because I think the camera will be okay. We have a new camera now, but I have so much to talk about. I don't want to risk any audio issues. Last year, I went in for a rhinoplasty or a nose job, and I did the surgery in secret because I didn't want people to know that I was doing it, yet I vlogged the whole thing, and then I decided to put it up on YouTube in hopes that it would help somebody else out there because I was coming from a place of extreme insecurity that I couldn't even tell people I was insecure about my nose that I'd like did the whole thing in secret. It was really, really well received and I'm so grateful for that. Every single day, I still get messages from people um, asking questions about the surgery or wanting more details or who've had the surgery and they wanna make sure whatever they're going through, I went through that as well. Like just a little bit of relatability, I guess. But here we are one year later. I can't leave you guys hanging because there's just too many people out there who want an update on this. I think I said it earlier that the original vlog was actually like an hour long and I managed to cut it down to like 20 or 30 minutes. I'm not even sure. I haven't looked at it since I posted it a year ago, but I cut a lot of it out because I was just kind of scared to be vulnerable on the internet and I wasn't sure how this content was even going to be well like received at all. There's a lot that happened behind the scenes that you guys didn't end up seeing. Let's start back at the very beginning. When I booked this appointment, I did all my research in secret, of course. My husband had no idea I was even researching this, but I basically looked up like a uh, nose job near me or something like that on Google, and I came across a couple different surgeons. Now, we live in a smaller city, and the thought of doing a nose job 
in the city I live in just kind of freaked me out a little bit. I don't know why. I just thought that the results might be better if I went to like a bigger city. So our closest main city is Toronto. I never shared my surgeon's information in that video. Uh, if you've messaged me directly about it, I always send it to you, but I just felt weird putting his like name out on the internet because I don't know, it just feels so strange because I don't know. The majority of our following is based in the US anyway, so I just didn't figure it was gonna be that helpful for people. Plus I didn't research other surgeons. Like I literally saw that my surgeon had amazing reviews. He specialized in um, neck and nose surgeries and his before and after photos were amazing. So I was sold right away. So it's not even like I had like other surgeons I could refer you to or like compared them with. I literally went for the first surgeon that that looked good to me. Anyways, if you message me directly about it, if you know that you're in the Ontario area where I live, uh, Hamilton area, I, I feel weird saying, saying where we live, so Hamilton area, um, message me on Instagram and I will absolutely hook you up with his contact info. I just don't feel comfortable sharing it in this video. So after I reached out for that appointment, I got a call right away from the receptionist looking to book a consult. The consult was free. I don't know if that's like, I, like I said, I don't have no idea if this applies to everybody, but this is just my experience. So the consult was free. We went in, I met with a doctor. I loved him right away. He was just the sweetest person. I ended up agreeing to book right then and there. And I think this was in October and by December I had the appointment. So it was a little bit of a wait, but not that long. I had to make a payment of, I think it was like, $1,300 I think was due at the time of booking. And then the remainder was due two weeks before the appointment. Again, I don't know if that would apply for anybody else. That was just my experience. As shown in that video, you can't eat or drink before your surgery, no gum, no water, no nothing. And my surgery was at like five o'clock at night. So I went from midnight the day before all the way through until, I don't even think I ate after the surgery when I got home that night. I think I just waited until the very next day. Uh, you surpass feeling hungry at some point, like it just, you don't feel it anymore. And after having the surgery, I didn't wanna eat, so I didn't eat. I get some questions about that. The day that I showed up for the surgery, the surgery took place in Toronto. However, my surgeon's office is no longer in Toronto. So if you were looking for somebody who is doing um, surgeries in the Toronto area. It's not him, but again, reach out to me directly and I will give you all that information. However, um, the day of my surgery, I had to arrive in North York. I got there an hour early. Andrew ended up coming with me, but he waited in the car. The rule for it at the time was that you couldn't bring anybody to the appointment with you the day of the surgery. They just needed to be available to pick you up after the surgery and drive you home. When I got to my surgery, I was greeted by a really, really nice receptionist. She had me sign my life away again, making sure that I absolutely consent to this surgery. And then they brought me in, did another questionnaire, took my temperature, um, did all the things to make sure that you're healthy and you're good to go through with the surgery and then had me I think I signed something else I don't even remember um, and then I changed into a gown so they put me in a room changed into a gown they gave me two medications I want to say it was painkiller and something else uh, anesthesiologist came in for a visit and then my surgeon himself I told him make my nose look cute he said I got you and then I went in for the surgery the surgery I think took like 45 minutes to an hour it's really really quick but they have to keep you there after to make sure that you know your vitals are good and everything looks okay um, that you don't have any bleeding happening or whatnot I fell asleep on the table woke up the surgery was done and that's when I started recording and that's what you guys see in the video. By the time I got home that night, the bruising had really taken off. I looked good for the first little bit there, right when I woke up and then it was getting worse and worse and worse. And by the second day I was very bruised. Now I did all of the things prior to the surgery to try and keep that bruising at a minimum. I was drinking pineapple juice. I was like eating, I don't even remember, whatever I could do to like help with swelling. I was trying to do it. I can't even remember everything, but I still bruised and swelled up like it didn't help at all so I don't know maybe it would work for you it didn't work for me and then that leads into the vlog and so that's what you guys start to see I vlogged for the week after having the surgery and then the following week as well because seven days after I had to go back to my surgeon's office and got the cast off I'm so excited 
and I just can't hide it. I've been waiting for this day. The cast is coming off, baby. And then that's when I started spiraling because it didn't look how I wanted it to look. My face was really, really swollen. I just was having a really tough time with it. Looking back on it now, I was being far too hard on myself. And a lot of you pointed that out that I am way too hard on myself. And I didn't realize that until I shared that content on the internet to have other people you know, say, like, take it easy on yourself. Um, I hadn't had that in real life before. So I was just having a really tough time and became very aware that maybe I need to go lighter, like just be nicer to myself. So my face was really, really swollen after the cast came off. My top lip had like disappeared. Basically everything that I was saying that looked weird on my face, like what I thought looked weird, I can now confirm that it did and people I knew in real life were trying to like tell me that I looked fine it doesn't look that bad like everything looks okay you don't look weird but I knew I looked weird I felt like I was being gaslit that yes I did look weird and now I can look back on it and I can say yes the swelling and everything was making my face look very different from how I had known it to look my whole life and those feelings were totally valid <laughs> I took photos throughout the entire healing process, so I'd always have something to look back on. And that really helps as well because then you can see the changes happening to your face. Now, after the cast came off, my, like I said, my top lip was like, gone and this part of my face was really swollen, but also here was swollen too. And I didn't realize that until months later when I looked back photos and videos of myself that I'm like, you could really see that I looked different. Uh, it affected all that area. Now um, that does go away and I look and feel fine by now, but it was for sure a struggle. I took my first selfie on Christmas day as I was getting ready to go for dinner with my family. And it was the first time I was able to take a photo of myself from this side, kind of like this angle, because uh, I would never do that before. In fact, when I shared that vlog, I had a few comments from people who were saying how they never noticed anything was off about my nose. And that was because you were not gonna see me from the side. I was very strategic about that, that I did not want people seeing me from that angle. I think the bruising on my face lasted just over two weeks. Uh, I'll go back and look at my footage and I'll just put it on the screen. But I believe that it was like maybe by three weeks the bruising was totally gone. The very last part of my face that stopped bruising was my eyelids and uh, it just looked like I had a smoky eye all the time until that finally healed. After the surgery is done, you have to do a nasal rinse to keep your sinuses clear. So you can get it at Shoppers Drug Mart or you know any Walgreens or pharmacy. And it's basically a little plastic container of water with a spout and you put it up your nose and it blows everything out of your nose. Now the first few times of using that, if you've not used it before, it can be very uncomfortable and kind of a weird, sensation but i did get used to it and i start, started to enjoy it a little bit too much andrew was like i think that you need to stop with the nasal rinse because i kept doing it for uh over a month after my surgery i don't think you're supposed to do it that long but it, it does really help with keeping your like nostrils clean and helping you to breathe because i mean for the first while after your surgery you still have like blood up your nose um, it's not pretty so that helps a lot after the cast came off as well and I was starting to heal I developed a little rectangle on the side of my nose it was like a little dent and I brought it up at the one month appointment and my surgeon wasn't phased by it he says it's it was going to go away and sure enough it did but it was just a weird little rectangle I guess that was just cartilage and stuff like that that got moved around that formed a little dent on the side of my nose there was also one night there where I was able to press on my eye and it made a squeaking noise <laughs> with my nose. Oh, bro. Something's going on here. Not sure if that's related to the nose job or if that's just a talent I didn't know I had, but I think that that has since gone away. I don't think I can do that anymore. For the following months after the cast came off, there was still a lot of sensitivity. Washing my face was difficult. I would feel a tingling uh, in the bridge, but the majority of the pain was in the tip. It wasn't even really pain. It was like, it was just kind of like an uncomfortable tingly feeling. I felt it a lot if I went outside in the cold we live in Canada, so we have a winter here and on really cold days, the tip of my nose would really kind of sting and I would have to go back inside because it would just be uncomfortable, but that went away eventually too. I will tell you though, that one of the perks of having the surgery right off the bat was because your skin is kind of like stretched out from the 
surgery or it's like tight I don't even know but I had no wrinkles in my forehead I had like no wrinkles at all it was like a Botox that came with the surgery the wrinkles have since come back they came back in about nine months uh, but they were gone for the longest time I'm not sure if you guys can see them on the camera it does have the smoothing effect so I do look a little smoother than I do in person right now. By February, uh, things were looking really good again. My lip had kind of healed or had loosened up a bit because I, I felt like I looked like a who from Whoville. That was the best way I could describe it, where like, like you're, like that, like you, if you blow air into the top of your lip and it kind of sticks out, that's what I was dealing with. Your lip just disappears. But by February, it was looking good. It was feeling good. There was still a bump in the side of my nose. Right after surgery, my nose was still taking its previous shape. Like it takes some time for it to take its new form. So I had a bump here and over the months it slowly started to dissipate and then now it's still kind of there, but not as bad. Also, I like how it looks. I feel like it looks really natural. It doesn't look like too swoopy or too smooth. I still like that I have like elements of my old nose. I still feel like I look like myself without it being too, dramatic of a change. Something else that I noticed for the first six months of the surgery was my skin was very, very oily. I watched some videos and people were saying that your skin either becomes very dry or it becomes very oily, but I was like an oil slick for the first few months after, but that went away as well. Uh, I was just basically using like oil, what's it called? Anti-oil face washes and things like that to to combat that, but my skin was very oily. The day of my three month appointment, I showed up at my surgeon's office and I thought I looked really good. I thought that like the swelling was pretty much gone. I was still taking selfies and feeling really confident. And um, all of this was still being filmed by the way, because we were filming content for our YouTube channel. So I was taking videos and seeing myself in the viewfinder and thinking I looked back to normal pretty much. But I showed up for my three month appointment and my surgeon right away was like, oh, you're still swollen, which is funny looking back I thought that I looked fine but he right away recognized that the tip is the last thing to stop swelling and that was still quite wide um, and then we took photos from this angle and as you can see my nostrils are crooked but they were like extra crooked at the three-month appointment my nostrils were never equal however uh, by three months they were really crooked and now they're still crooked but it doesn't bother me none. Right after you have the surgery, you can't breathe through your nose. So you become a mouth breather. And I go out of my way to not be a mouth breather. However, you have to breathe out your mouth as you have the cast on. And then basically for weeks to follow, it just feels more comfortable to breathe through your mouth, especially when you sleep, like sleeping with your mouth open. I went for a dentist appointment uh, about a month after the surgery and I had developed a freaking tonsil stone, which I had never had before. As soon as my dentist took a look and said, I think you have a tonsil stone. And sure enough, I did. She goes, are you a mouth breather? And I said, no, I'm not usually, but I just had a nose job and now I have to be a mouth breather. And it's very likely that that was the cause of that. So something to consider, gargle your mouthwash. If you have this surgery, stay on top of that. Sorry, my dog's crying. Just to hopefully prevent tonsil stones. It was just something I never even thought that could come up, but you have to breathe through your mouth, so it's very likely to happen. I didn't experience any nosebleeds or any sort of issues along those lines. Everything healed up really great, and the entire process of healing um, was really fine and easy. I had a worse experience with my wisdom teeth, and that's what I've been telling people too when you guys reach out with questions, I or if you're scared about having the surgery, I tell everybody that getting my wisdom teeth out was a million times worse than this surgery. I would not do my wisdom teeth again, but if I had to get another nose job, I would probably do it. Something else though that did come up, which is a little strange, is that I've noticed a change in my voice. When I look back on videos that I shot a year ago to videos now, my voice sounds different. Uh, it's kind of hard to describe. Maybe if you guys go back and watch like old TikToks or old shorts, you can hear me narrating. It's just something about my voice sounds different. I wish I carried through to my singing voice and made me a better singer, but I can confirm that that was not the case. <laughs> I think that's pretty much the main changes I wanted to tell you guys about. Now that we're a year later and I've seen the whole process, I've experienced it myself, it does get better. If you were somebody like me who had the cast come off and then you struggled for a while to see your own reflection and see yourself in the mirror and not recognize who you saw, it totally gets better. And just be nice to yourself and be patient. 
I did the surgery right before Christmas, so I had an added stress that I was going to see people who didn't know I was having the surgery and they would you know, know that I had the surgery or judge me for it or whatever, which looking back is just so silly because people are so concerned with their own appearance. Most of the time they're not thinking about yours or even aware of what it is that you're insecure about. Like I said, I never expressed to anybody that I was insecure. So nobody knew that this was even something on my radar that I could potentially do one day. I was just so much in my own head that this experience helped me to look at the bigger picture and realize that it's not that serious and everybody else has their own worries and things going on. I needed to be a little nicer to myself and I wish I had been because it would have made the experience a lot easier. My advice to you is if you can do the surgery not around maybe a major holiday, that can help with some stress. However, I showed up to Christmas dinner and nobody recognized anything was different. So it was all in my head either way. I wanna take some time to answer your questions about this surgery. Uh, I get asked them all the time. And again, if you guys have any questions and you don't want that to be public in the comment section, send me a message on Instagram. I do try my best to answer my DMs um, and just keep messaging me if I miss it. Sometimes messages go to my hidden folder. I don't know why. Um, but let's talk about some questions that you guys always have. So first things first, I did not tape my nose after. My surgeon said that he didn't even recommend taping your nose because it's still broken when the cast comes off and it, so it needs time to heal and just taping wasn't necessary. I don't know, I can't speak for everybody, but my own experience was don't tape your nose. I get asked whether I had an open or a closed rhinoplasty. I had a closed one where everything's done inside my nostrils so there's no visible scar. I don't think anyway. The cost of my surgery was 11,000 Canadian. I've never put that out there just because sometimes it can feel weird talking money uh, when it comes down to a big expense like that. I don't know how that price compares to other surgeons, to be honest. It seemed fair to me. And I only had to pay 1,300 at the time of booking and then the extra 9,000 was due two weeks before. So it, it didn't bother me. I would pay it again if I absolutely needed to because I swear by my surgeon, he was absolutely phenomenal. And then that leads me into his contact information. Again, I feel weird putting it online. I'm so sorry. It's just for his own privacy and I just doesn't feel like my place to be putting him out there but send me a message and I am happy to send it to you. And as far as how long this took, the surgery was like two hours from the time that I got there to the time of getting off the operating table, I think. It was really, really fast. I went home that same day and then you just need to give yourself some time to heal. Cast came off after one week and then it was just waiting for the swelling to go away. I don't know if there's anything else that I need to talk about. Let me grab Andrew and see if he knows. Do you remember anything else that happened? Your new excessively heavy breathing through your nose. Yeah, he says I breathe really heavy now. Like when you're eating, all I hear is Um, okay, yeah, so my heavy breathing, what else? You walk around like this a little bit more now. Andrew does swear that um, I am now, he, he jokes that I walk around with my nose up in the air, like the, you know, the analogy of saying that you're like stuck up, you yeah, walk around. Not. Walk around with your nose up in the air, but it has, this surgery has brought me a whole new level of confidence that I did not have before. That's just a perk of it all, is that I do wish I did the surgery sooner because I have never been confident in myself, but I finally feel confident and I, you know, I just give myself permission when I'm in public to take up space. And that I'm you're, you're a big girl now. I'm a big girl now, yeah. I think that that pretty much concludes everything that I wanted to say about this surgery. If I could go back in time, I would have done it sooner. I just, we couldn't afford it. And it's always been something I wanted, but like I said, I was just far too insecure to even talk about it. So I'm glad that I did it. I was 29 at the time, just turning 30. So I am in my 30s now with a newfound confidence that I've gone my whole life without. And I credit all of that to having this nose job, which might sound so silly to some people, but if you've ever been really, really insecure about something and then able to fix it, you probably know the newfound confidence that can come from that. And that's exactly what I experienced. So I would do it a hundred times over. I would recommend it to anybody if you feel like something in your life is holding you back and you're able to make that change uh, in order to live your best life, then 
more power to you and go for it. If I can be a resource for anybody, please reach out at any time to me on Instagram. But I hope you guys have enjoyed and I will see you guys in our next video. Bye.